So now we're going to start working on factoring higher degree polynomials. We'll start looking at cubics, some quartics. Uh, we might even move on from there, but um, there's only some that we can factor that have nice patterns that work out. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to be the case for all of these, like quadratics, were nice and had that, that way that we could factor. Um, so let's start by looking at the sum and difference of cubes. And you might have heard of the term SOPs. Okay, so let's go ahead and just see. So you see I've got the quantity AX cubed minus this B cubed, and I could have BY cubed as well, but I've got two perfect cubes. So let's go ahead and see what this would factor to. So this always goes like this. It goes AX minus B. So it always follows what's inside of the cubes times the quantity AX squared. So the sum of the first, the opposite of the product, so is a minus, so I'm going to be plus AX times B. All right, and then the square of the last plus b squared, and so that's what this is always going to factor to. Um, and one little trick is if you don't even want to remember the opposite product, it's if it's a minus here, it's going to be a plus there. Those two are always the opposite, and this is always the square of the last, so it's always going to be plus. So let's look at this one. So this would factor to ax plus b times quantity again ax squared the opposite product. So now it's going to be minus ax times b and then plus the square of the last which would be the quantity b squared. And I should have this really the quantity b squared there. Um, okay, so there it is. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first example. Okay, so we see we've got x cubed minus 125. Makes it nice and easy. We can see clearly that's a cube. Clearly that's a cube. What I always do is I break it down into their houses. What cube gives me x cubed? Well, it's x. And what cube gives me 125? Okay, well that's 5. And now I just follow the formula like we had on the other sheet. So we take the, just follow suit. So whatever's inside, so it always becomes x minus 5 times the quantity. The square of the first, well that's my first term, so it would be x squared. The opposite of the product, or just remember it's the opposite of that sign, so it would be plus 5x. And then plus the square of the last, which would be 5 squared. And if we work this all out, x minus 5 x squared plus 5x plus 25. And there that's factored. All right, let's move to the next one. This one tends to give people a little bit harder of a time, but again, let's just break it down. What cubed gives me 8x cubed? Okay, so that's 2x cubed. And what cubed gives me 27y cubed? Okay, that's 3y. Okay, so I've got my first and my second. Okay, so now we rewrite. It's always 2x follow suit minus, that shouldn't look like an equal sign, let me get rid of that. 2x minus 3y. So there's my first part. Now the next part, the square of the first term. So it's 2x. I'm always using what's inside the house. So 2x, I'll put it here, the quantity 2x squared. The opposite of the product. So it's a minus, so it's going to become plus. And it'll be 2x times 3y. And then plus the square of the last, 3y squared. Okay, so let's just work the math out now. So 2x minus 3y. 2x squared is going to be 4x squared. People always mess that up. I'm just telling you right now, people always mess that up. Plus, product here would be 6xy, and the square of the last would be 9y squared. Excellent. All right, taking a look at this one, we see we've got a quartic. Um, we haven't learned how to factor that yet, so let's go ahead and see if, how we can factor this. Oh, but I noticed there is a GCF between the x's. Both are even, so let's take out a 2x and see what happens. All right, leaves me with 64x cubed plus 1. Okay, hmm, 64 is definitely a cube, and I've got x cubed. 1 is also a cube, so I've got the sum of two cubes, so let's see what this breaks down to. So it leaves me with, I break it into its house, 4x cubed would get me to 64x cubed, and 1 cubed would get me to 1. So okay, so now I've got this sum of two perfect cubes, so let's use our formula. 2x is just chilling on, on the outside, so let's see what we got here. So it's just going to be the sum of the, fir of the term, so it would be 4x plus 1, times the square of the first term, so 4x squared, that quantity squared, plus the pro opposite product, so that should be a minus sign. So minus the opposite of the product, 4x times 1, and then plus the square of the last, 1 squared. And again, let's go ahead and do some math here and see what that leaves us with, and keep that 2x on the outside. So we've got 4x plus 1, 4x squared is going to leave me with 16x squared minus 4x plus 1. And this is going to be the whole thing. I'm going to get rid of this bracket now. So we've got 2x times quantity 4x plus 1 
times the quantity is 16x squared minus 4x plus 1. All factored, and there's cubics. And let's take a look at this one. Okay, so I'm still cubic. Definitely don't have the sum or difference of two perfect cubes. So we've got a lot more going on here. So this one we need to factor by grouping. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these first two terms and group them together. We're going to take these last two terms and group them together. I can do that because of the associative property. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and then we'll pull out GCFs just like we practiced earlier. So what's the GCF in this whole term? And we can see that it's an x squared. So that leaves me with 2x plus 5. Okay, let's go ahead and see what is the GCF in this whole term. Well, they're both factors of 5, so we'd have plus 5 times 2x plus 5. Well, notice that. Isn't that fancy? We can see that these two terms are the same, so I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. So that 2x plus 5 is going to jump out here, and what's going to be left over? x squared plus 5. And now, I am totally factored. There's factoring by grouping. All right, let's try factoring this beast. Now we see we got to the fourth power. But as I look across again, our first thing is always looking for that GCF. And do we have one here? And the answer to that is yes. We see all our evens, so they're all multiples 2, and there's an x in there as well. So let's take this 2x out first and see what's left over. All right, x cubed plus 5x squared minus 9x minus 45. Okay, so now let's see what we have. Again, I've got cubics, right? That's great, except I don't know how to factor this big thing. If it was the difference or sum of two perfect cubes, I'd be good to go. But in this case, I can't. So let's try grouping and see if that works, and, and then we'll go from there. So we've got 2x. I'm going to put brackets here. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to take an x squared out of these first two as I group those together. And so that would leave me with x plus 5. All right, now remember my little trick here when there was a minus there. I changed it to a plus, put that on the inside. Okay, and if there's a negative on this first part here, if there's a negative there, I want to pull that net minus out. Okay, so I'm going to do minus, and now I'm going to take out their common factor is 9. So it would be x plus 5. All right, we've got the bracket around to keep that there. All right, so that's always the one little trick there. Make sure you keep that negative on the inside of that factor. Now we've got the common term here, so I'm going to pull that out. So we've got 2x. And so I've got x plus 5 times x squared minus 9. And a lot of you might try to say that you're done here, but I might say I hear bells. When I look at that, I see x squared minus 9 is the difference of two perfect squares, going back to another video. And so that leaves us with 2x, x plus 5, and factoring this, x plus 3 times x minus 3. And now we are completely factored, and we're good to go.